Men's weight are normally distributed with a mean of 172 pounds, a standard deviation of 26 pounds, approximately what percentage of men are between 120 and 198. So again, we have this phrase in the problem that says normally distributed. This makes me think of a bell curve. And then they go on to tell me that approximately, or they ask, go on to ask me approximately what percentage of men are between 120 and 198. So when I see this phrase, approximately what percentage are within this interval and the mention of normally distributed, I'm thinking empirical rule. So they're telling me that men's weights fall under the bell curve. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a bell curve. That's my first step in these problems. I'll start out with a drawing that reflects the bell-shaped curve. Again, you do your best to make it um, bell-shaped looking. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you should always label some standard information on the curve, like the mean, for example, in this case, 172 is our mean. You should also go ahead and put on the curve the standard deviation they give you. That is 26 in this case. Okay, now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the two numbers from the problem on the curve. We're talking about what percentage will be between 120 and 198. So I'm going to think, okay, well, where are those numbers? Certainly, I think that 120 would be something below the mean, right? So I'm going to draw some tick marks here, and I'm going to go ahead and put 120 down here. That's certainly below average. And then I'll try to put um, the next number, 198, above. So you'll see that I've drawn it. You know, you might say, well, why isn't it um, perfectly symmetric around there? Because I think quickly in my head I can tell that 198 and 172 are closer together than 120 and 172. So I'm going to go ahead and give some space there between them. All right, but it doesn't matter. You don't have to draw it perfectly. As long as the 198 is above 172 and as long as 120 is below 172, then we're good. All right, the next thing I want to do once we have that drawn down is I want to say, okay, what are they looking for? Are they looking for outside of the interval, between the interval? Well, they tell us between. So I know that I'm actually looking for the area that's going to occur between these two lines. That's what I want to know. What's the total area between these two lines? So that combined space there, I've kind of shaded in red. What's that area? All right, well, let's try to figure that out. What we should do is to probably realize, again, that we only have so many options here. When the number of standard deviations k is 1, and what that reflects is 1 standard deviation above the mean, 1 below the mean, we capture approximately 68% of the data in that span. When k is 2, we capture approximately 95%. And when k is 3, we capture approximately 99.7%. So you have to keep that rule in mind, because that's the rule we need to use to solve this. So our goal then is to figure out, well, how far apart are these numbers in terms of standard deviations? Does this reflect one standard deviation above average? Does it reflect two, three? That's our question. To do that, we can use a formula. We can go ahead and say, all right, let's take that 198, and we'll plug it into this formula for k. So we put it first, 198, and then we subtract off the mean, which is 172, and then divide by that standard deviation they gave us, which is 26. Now, when I do 198 minus 172, I come up with a difference of 26. Dividing by 26, I end up with 1. So now I know that that's one standard deviation above average. One standard deviation above average. Okay, why is that helpful? Well, this curve is symmetric, right? The bell curve is symmetric. So when I see that k equals 1 corresponds to 68% of the area, then I know it actually breaks down neatly into two halves. So I know that means that, you know, 1 below, 1 above captures 68%, but that'll be 34 in each piece. So that means that from here to here must be 34%. So I can go ahead and answer this part already. I know that this little part is 34% because it's one standard deviation above the mean. That corresponds to 68. If you go one above, one below, half of it's 34. So now I know that that's 34. Excellent. Okay, that's a good start. Now I'm going to get the other side. So let's take that 120 and plug it into the K formula. K is equal to, we'll do 120 minus the mean of 172, and divide by the standard deviation of 26. If I do 120 minus 172, I'm going to end up with a difference that is a little larger. It's minus 52, and I'm going to divide that by 26. Now, 26 will go even into 52, negative 2.0 times, or negative 2 times. All right, so... The negative just reflects below average, so we don't pay attention much to that, but we will say that 
Um, we're dealing with this scenario then, right? Where k is two. Now, the important thing about that is, is that that curve is also again, symmetric. And when k is two, it captures 95%. That's between two standard deviations of the mean, right? Two standard deviations from the mean. And half of it on each side corresponds to, corresponds to 4750 and 4750. Again, because the curve is symmetric. Where does the 4750 come from? It's half of 95. Divide 95 in half, you get that value. So from here to here, since that's two standard deviations below, that should be 4750. So again, I now know that part of the curve. Now to get the total area from 120 to 198, I'll have to add these two areas together. So that's my final solution to the problem. So when I want to know what percentage is between 120 and 198, the answer is going to be 47.5% added to 34.0%. And actually it's approximately, right? Of course, these are approximations, but they're very close. The answer turns out to be five here. That'll give you 11, carry your one, you get 81.5%. So the answer to the question is going to be approximately 81.5%. That's the answer.